kind of laid back and so and that's possible. the nervousness would always be the teachers going around and picking people and it's like, yeah. don't pick me, don't pick me, don't yeah, pick yeah. me. Oh, or that oh, like knowing me. when they're going like in order for things and yeah. you're like, all right, there's three people ahead of me, now there's two, there's one. It's like that countdown until it gets to you and that builds up. Mm -hmm. And then when it gets to you, like, oh, you know, they, yeah. they see yeah. things. Yeah. Well, even when speaking like the countdown. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Like, all right, so well, I'm just. With speaking, all anxiety can be suffered, can be calculated. Nine times out of 10, what I find most people, they're anxious, they're only anxious, they're not sure what they're going to say. So even as a speaker, if I do an interview, if I do TV or something like that, I already know my go-to are people. So no matter what happens, my job is to rewrite the topic back to what I want to do. In other words, someone's like how Bill Clinton was under investigation. They asked him a specific question. Did she sleep with that woman? He never answered it. Like he redirected it. I did not have sexual relations. What is a sexual relation? Did you sleep with her or not? Yeah, just answer the question. So the idea of being is to have pre-formulated content up here, and so every question is thrown as you know how to reach segue back to that box. So we're talking about people that have like anxiety towards speaking. Yeah. Okay. It's not mm -hmm. that side of it. Okay. I understand what you're saying. Sure. If someone did say to me, mm -hmm. "Oh, we have a random topic that we're going to throw you on stage and speak about," that would scare the crap out of me. You know, where like someone like Sean, like, "All right, let's go." Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, he's, he's all day long. Of course, yeah. Yeah. he's yeah. Yeah. like no yeah. preparation. He doesn't really need it. Yeah. Right. That's changing now because I'm about to step up my game. So do you feel like you need preparation for yours? Do you feel like you're just, you just get the nervous energy? It's funny because I, when I do create my outline, like I do it pretty quickly and then I just know and then I know what I'm going to say. Okay. Um, again, it's more of a physical thing for me. Okay. Like I'm like, why is my body behaving like that? Like I know what I'm going to say. Okay. You know, I've done this before. Okay. You know, it usually comes out well. So <laughs> I don't know. It's more of like a physical thing. So a season as I am. What happens with me is for some strange reason, my feet start to get real itchy at the bottom. It's like you can't take your really? shoes off, so it's sort of like, yeah. If I go okay. into a room, it doesn't happen all the time. It happens occasionally where I may have a little bit of nervous energy. Uh -huh. My feet get real itchy at the bottom of them. It's like, okay, I can't take my shoes off. So you're trying to do one of these deals when you go uh -huh. there. Um, but a lot of times it's kind of clearing my mind yeah. and envisioning what I want the end result to be, you know, mm. thoughts or things. So what I'll do is I'll pull myself away from everyone else, take a second to kind of reflect and redirect everything. Because a lot of that nervous energy oftentimes is up here. The body's reacting to what's going on up here, yes, yes. right? Agreed. So it's almost like if, if, if I'm distressed about something, depressed about something, the reaction could be that, you know, I'm feeling pain in my body or I'm feeling tired all something. I'm feeling tired Well, I'm thinking about someone that I care about that's hurt or ill or yeah. sick or something like that. And it's, it's affecting all, it's the body's response to it, right? Um, so the idea being, can I clear this up? And when I clear this up, everything that goes on with it clears up also. What I used to do to get rid of mine is I would walk back and forth in the back of the room, almost like a panther on the prowl. So I would look at the stage and saying, hey, I'm going to go on that stage. And so I'm walking back and forth slowly, watching the stage, taking my mind off the negative result and thinking on the positive. I'm future forecasting, so I'm taking a look at what I want the result to be before I get on the stage. I want to stand in ovation on my folks afterwards saying, man, I received so much information. I'm glad you came out that day. So what I would work with you on is being able to kind of clear your mindset up. So when you feel that coming on, because what happens is I could be clear about what I'm going to talk about, but for whatever reason, something might trigger in my mind. I'm like, okay, so I can't go up there doing this with my feet or whatever have you. So let me take a second off to the side and get my mind cleared up and then go up there with a clear mindset knowing I'm going to crush it. Okay. So I'm thinking that's your situation there. Because I can't see someone who does your lifestyle, right? You're out there dancing in front of folks, right? That that's an issue. But a lot of times it's a mental disconnect where this is the body's response to what's going on up here. Right? So would you say if it was based on maybe a past experience, what would you well, say to someone? Well, it's an agreement. Can't compromise So a lot of times, just like a psychiatrist, the camera, the counselor, the psychiatrist would say, okay, this is the issue. Let's go back to the past where it resonated at. Now let's go address it back then. So if it's a reason where, like for me growing up, I was an introvert. People go, how are you an introvert? You just get in front of rooms of people and speak and talk. As a child growing up, I knew I talked too much. And around third grade, they put me next to the one girl in school everyone had a crush on. Her name was Charmaine Brown. Everybody I'm had a crush so on her. Sorry, this is great. Just real quick. 